I like this episode, don't get me wrong, but the thing that actually made me the most excited in this entire episode was seeing the opening that the league is official and finally coming soon. I cannot wait. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 104 of the Sun and Moon anime just dropped, and we are finally at Pony Island with Ash looking to beat the island Kahuna here. How do they go? Well, let's find out. The episode begins with the sun rising, and we see Hapu. She's picking up these massive radishes, and we're getting some help from some goaler, who she thanks. She then gives some radishes to the Oracorio who are singing beside her and giving her encouragement, and she says that she's really proud of these radishes. Pony Island Research Project the search for the island king. The episode begins with all of our heroes already at Pony Island. Joy introduces herself and when Ash asks, she says that she's the youngest of all the other Joys and people call her the cutest, which gets the reaction you think it would. Kakui then asks this group if they remember why they're here at Pony Island and they respond that they're here for their personal research project. He then asks them what their each individual project idea is, which is a nice way to let us the viewers know what the next couple episodes are going to be about. Softly says that he wants to evolve his charger bug and Joy tells him that he could do that here at Vast Pony Canyon. Kiawe says that he wants to polish up his skills in the wilderness at Pony Island, but more than him, his Marowak seems to be fired up. Mallow says that she wants to find some pony radishes and use them for a recipe for her restaurant. Lana says that she plans on meeting up with her master Ida from episode 40. Apparently, she has been keeping in touch through writing. It's Lily's turn, but she spaced out. She apologized to Cuckoo and says that she was just remembering the last time she was here was to save Lusamine. Technically, the last time she was here would have been to investigate the alternate Krasma, but we'll just let that slide. She says that she wants to learn about the Pokemon here on Pony Island. Finally, Ash is asked and he responds that he's here to do the grand trial, especially because he's done all the other trials and he feels ready. However, the others respond by silence and he asks why and they tell him that Pony Island doesn't have an Island King. Thopcles tells him that it was all over the TV and the Island King retired because he was getting too old. I guess that's the difference from the game. In the game, the Kahuna had been dead for a while and Tapu just hadn't chosen one, but in here, they retired. I can understand why though. Ash then gets an idea and says that if there's no Island Kahuna, then he'll go challenge Tapu Fini directly. Kakui tells him that he's never heard of that, but Ash reassures him that it'll be okay and he should head back to Mele Mele. There's the students tell him that as well and nudge him towards the boat. He says fine, fine, and that he'll be waiting for the reports back in Melee Melee. Ashton says let's explore and starts heading off to Pony Island. And as Kakui and Nurse Joy are talking, we hear a splash, which is Ash falling down on the bay, presumably pulled down by the relicant that was once there. We then cut to Ash running up the hill and turning around to an ocean view of Pony Island. It looks great and he loves it. His friends are behind him and tell him to chill out a bit, but he tells them that they're exploring. Not only that, but he wants to meet Tapu Fini as soon as possible. However, just then, Rotom spots Golurk picking up Pony Radishes. They are indeed massive, and Ash goes up to the fences to check him out. However, as Ash is at the fence, the Golurk tells him to stay out. Ash is kind of shocked by a talking Golurk, and it asks Ash if it's the Radish Thief, and Ash tries to tell it no, but it attacks with Flash Cannon, sending Ash flying back. We then see Hapu on top of the Golurk, jumping down. So, it was her talking, not the Golurk. She tells Ash that she will punish the Radish Radish Thief, and as Ash tries to explain that he isn't the Radish Thief, but she hasn't had any of it, forcing Ash to get ready for battle. He sends out a Pikachu, which Rotom tells him is a huge disadvantage against the Golurk, which is part ground. Ash responds that he knows, and starts doing a quick attack. Then, he switches off to an Iron Tail, hitting the Golurk in its knee. Hapu is impressed by Ash's strategy, and when Ash tries this strategy again, the Golurk catches him and slams him to the ground. Pikachu is able to get up, but is pretty weary. Then, Hapu uses high horsepower from the Golurk and knocks Pikachu out in one shot. Ash then goes up to check if his Pikachu is okay and Kiawe tells him that they should head back to the Pokemon Center. Hapu tells him that this is what happens to Radish Thieves and that he should never come back here again and walks away on top of her Golur. Who's that Pokemon? It's Golur! We're back at the Pokemon Center and Ash's Pikachu is healed. He thanks Nurse Joy and the group start discussing what happened. Ash and Kiawe talk about how tough her Golurk was and how she also had her Mudsdale, meaning she's most likely a ground type trainer. Nurse Joy, overhearing them, asks if they're talking about Hapu. They ask if she knows her and Joy tells him that Hapu lives in the Radish fields up in the hills all alone. Mallow asks, Didn't she have any family? And Joy responds that her parents live close by, but she never leaves that field. The reason is because she used to live there with Mr. Sofu. Kiawe says, The same Mr. Sofu who was the island king before the last one? And she tells him, Yeah. Mr. Sofu deeply cared for Hapu and taught her everything from growing vegetables to battling Pokemon. Ash comments, so That's why she's so strong. And Joy tells him, Partially, but not really. It's just that she hates losing. And at the beginning, she used to lose all the time, but she kept rematching these adults over and over because there aren't many kids at her age until she was just good. Ashton understands why she is so strong. When I first watched this episode, I really didn't like Hapu. She came off way too cocky and condescending. And while I still think she does by the end of this episode, you can 
can understand her a little bit more. Her story is different from the game of course. In the game she lives with her grandmother and it's implied her parents aren't around. And I think I like the game story a bit better but this is a great back down story for Hapu nonetheless. Mallow then stops and thinks and Lana asks her what's up. She says that while they probably shouldn't have gone to the radish field she asks if it was really worth getting that mad over. Lily then adds that they were accused of being radish thieves and Joy tells him that apparently some people have been stealing Hapu's radishes and she considers them precious so she was on watch with her goal in Rudsdale. Ash is still upset because he didn't steal anything and was wrongly accused. Mallow then asks Nurse Joy how the pony radishes taste and she brings out one that she's had bought recently. She chops it up for everyone to try some and everyone's reaction is mixed. The girls seem to like them and the guys seem to think they're too spicy. Similarly, most of our heroes Pokemon don't seem to like them but a couple do. It's an acquired taste as Joy puts it and apparently the ones from Hapu's fields are particularly great. We cut back to Hapu in her field. She's taking a break and reflecting on the battle. She says that Ash has a lot of guts for using Pikachu against a goaler. We then cut back to the Pokemon Center. Everyone seems to be planning to head out. Kiawe and Sophocles are going to Pony Island. Lana is going fishing to try to catch some Pokemon before meeting up with Ida. Mallow and Lily are going to explore the area and Mallow in particular is going to the market to get some things and Ash is going to look for Tapu Fini. Rotom decides to go with Ash because ultimately the potential for adventure is the highest there. Ash then starts heading off. We cut back to Hapu working in the field and she notices it's too quiet. There are no Oricorio around so she decides to go patrol with her goaler and find out what's going on. We cut to Ash and Rotom walking and Rotom asks where he's headed. He responds that since Fini looks like a water type it's probably by the sea and they come across the beach as Rotom reads the Pokedex entry for Tapu Fini. In the beach Ash calls out for Tapu Fini to battle but notices some Oricorio. He asks Rotom and Rotom tells him that the Pony Oricorio are ghost and flying type and he sees a radish being used as bait to bring an Oricorio to the edge of the beach then snatched. Turns out it's Team Skull. They stole the radishes and were using them to capture Oricorios in the bag. The reason is so that they can make them dance to the entrance to the Skull Gang Paradise. They're really excited because they think it'll make Big Sis happy. Ash confronts them however. He tells them to knock it off and asks them what are they doing here in Pony. He then asks them and they respond that they came to this island to create the Skull Paradise or Scoopara for short and also their big sister called him there. Ash doesn't know what they're talking about and tells them to just let the Oracorio go. They respond that he'll have to fight for it and call out their Zubat, Garbodor, and Salandit. Ash is ready and calls out his Pikachu. Just then however, Hapu who's in the air patrolling sees them facing off and lands in front of them. She then sees her destroyed radishes and looks at Ash who tells her he didn't do it. They did and points to the bag of Oracorio and Team Skull and she's very upset and wants to punish them so she calls out her Mudstail. Team Skull feigns not being intimidated and have their Pokemon use Flame Burst, Supersonic, and Venoshock but just hits it and activate Mudsdale's stamina ability. Then she uses high horsepower from Mudsdale to knock all three of them down. Rotom and Ash comment, wow one hit. Then she goes up to them tells them they should probably leave and just as they're doing that we hear a voice telling them to knock it off. It's their big sis or Plumeria. She tells them that they aren't following her orders at all and calls the idea of the Team Skull Mansion and having Oracorio dance in the entrance foolish. She then heads back along with the other Team Skull member even though Hapu tries to get her to stop. Hapu then apologizes to Ash for blaming him for being the Radish Thief. He says that's okay and asks that if they can battle again, but Hapu tells him no. This had nothing to do with that and flies away on her goaler. Ash then tells her that he isn't giving up, and the episode ends with our heroes eating dinner at the Pokemon Center and thanking Nurse Joy for the food, who wishes them luck in their projects. We also have a brand new ending song and visuals. The song is called Notes by the Heart, and the visuals are basically a transition from a bunch of different places our heroes have been, like the beach, the snow, the jungle, ending with them at the bar at the jungle of the Oranguru. It's a nice song, and it really does feel like the ending signifies the end of their journey journeys coming up. The previous one felt like an adventure with things like the beach and chasing Pokemon. This feels much more subdued and I think it's to reflect the fact that the Sun and Moon anime is coming to a close pretty soon. The after credit scene is one where all of our heroes are gathered and Lana tells them that she caught a shiny relicant. However, it turns out it's just a print of the Pokemon on a piece of paper and all of our heroes agree that they can't tell if it was shiny or not. Overall, this is a good episode. It set up the next couple of episodes which I really appreciate and also it gave me us a good reason to why Hapu is the way she is. She has a chip on her shoulder and she wants to live up to it. Also, she's incredibly strong and now that I think about it, she has such a massive advantage over Ash's team's Pokemon that the trial against her is going to be interesting when it does eventually happen. Ash has three Pokemon weak to ground and if she was able to two-shot Pikachu with her goaler, imagine how strong that Mudsdale is. Also, I know people are probably upset at the fact that Plumeria was only on screen for a moment, but I don't think this is the end of her and from all the episode titles that have came out, we're going to be here in Pony for a while, so she's going to have plenty of chances to make a splash. That also includes Guzma. Also, I know 
know I said this in the intro, but seeing the league being built makes me so excited. I'm eager to see not only the league, but the last two Pokemon for Ash's team for the league. Will he bring back some old ones, or will he capture new ones? I guess we'll have to wait and find out. The next episode preview shows a battle against Ash's Lycanroc and Gladion's Lycanroc. The battle, if you've seen the preview, looks like it's going to be pretty awesome. Also, it looks like they're going to bring up Moan, Lily and Gladion's father. I never thought the anime would tackle that, since in the games, he lost his memory due to an experiment, and they just leave him alone. I wonder if the story is going to be the same here. I'm not sure. Let's find out. But anyways, that's it for my Pokemon Sun and Moon episode review. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, like, share, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.